you're watching Strat News Global. I'm Amita Bravi. Joining us from Abuja in Nigeria is Philip Obaji Jonia. He's a senior Nigerian journalist. Thanks so much, Philip, for giving us time. Thank you so much, Amita. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Just wanted to get uh, your understanding and reading. You've been talking to people on the ground across the country. What the situation is now after those reports of uh, police or army law enforcement firing on protesters on Tuesday? Well, there's still so much anger across Nigeria, particularly in Lagos, where the incident you mentioned took place. Um, the coffee that was imposed by the Lagos state government is still in force. So we're not seeing too many people on the streets like we've seen in the last two weeks. But um, the incident that happened on Tuesday is still pretty much in the minds of many people in Lagos. And um, only this morning we had the vice president of Nigeria, you know, for the first time since the incident happened, publicly condemning the, the, the acts by the soldiers and then offering his sympathies to those who you know, were injured and even those who were lost. It's still very difficult to confirm how many people were killed in the during the incident. But you know, Nigerians are still pretty much angry and agitated. Um, this is not the end. The social media is still, you know, you know, agog with lots of tweets calling for an end to police brutality, you know, asking for the resignation of the president and the vice president. Yeah, but we're not seeing the same kind of momentum on the street, obviously, because people are scared. And also because of the curfew, what Nigerians, you know, the majority of Nigerians are not, you know, hearing back. They want to see an end to police brutality and they want to see justice done you know, to the victims of, you know, police aggression. Like you're saying, it's so uh, difficult to get uh, information because there are curfew, there are restrictions. Uh, there's a lot of media posts on social media that uh, we really can't uh, verify and hence even we won't be able to show any of that but say uh, international human rights organization like amnesty international says maybe up to a dozen people have been killed in firing on tuesday they are saying since the beginning of protests in october uh, dozens like 38 plus people have been killed Absolutely. what are your sources telling you from uh, you know hospitals across the country well many hospitals are treating uh, victims who were injured and um, We've not been, I have personally, I've not been able to confirm, you know, if anyone has died in the hospital or in these hospitals. But what I do know is that you know, a number of hospitals are treating injured victims. Um, it's like you did say, it's really very difficult to confirm the number of deaths. But the Lagos State government said just one person was killed on Tuesday evening. Um, many sources are saying up to a dozen people were killed. You know, so it's really, really very difficult to, to confirm. There's, there, there's also some some assertions that the the soldiers that fired at protesters on Tuesday took away the dead bodies of mm. the people who were killed. Uh, the military has denied this. Um, there, there is no video footage to show that that happened. You know, it may have happened. Uh, we don't know. But we, all we know is what the people who were on ground have told us. That this was what happened military shot live, you know, ammunition at protesters. I'm not sure, even the military has denied this, but there's a lot of um, video evidence to, to show that live ammunitions were used during the protest, but it's still very difficult to confirm as to how many people were killed during the incidents, but a lot of people were injured. Uh, when you're talking about uh, the protests, now these protests have been on for uh, weeks now, at the beginning of this month, and it started out as a protest against police brutality, against the SARS uh, unit of the, the police about mm -hmm. corruption. But uh, now it's not only about that. It's not only about justice for the people who have been uh, killed or wounded in the latest attacks, but it's a larger movement, it seems, against the system, wanting, for, uh, wanting reform in the system. Mm, that's true. The, the initial protest was for you know, um, an end or a disbandment of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SAS, as a lot of people know it. Uh, this, this is because for so many years, this unit, this police unit, you know, has been accused of grave human rights violations, extrajudicial killings, harassment, torture, extortion, so, you know, so many things. And a lot of Nigerians felt that 
this had become too much. And only at the start of October, a young Nigerian was killed, you know, very close to a hotel in Lagos. So Nigerians generally felt this had become too much. We need to do something about it. And the government response, you know, was initially, I'll say, good, in the sense that the president announced a uh, total disbandment of SNAP. Yes. But what Nigerians wanted was they needed to see some tangible action. For example, they needed to see that the culprits of these extrajudicial killings, extortion, and what have you, are brought to book, and that the victims of uh, SARS brutality are adequately compensated. So Nigerians generally did not believe that the government will be um, serious about you know, keeping this promise of disbanding SARS and then perhaps looking into the crimes of officers of this unit. So that was it. And up till two days ago, much of the call by protesters was for you know, justice, reforms, and also compensation of victims. But since the incident in Lagos on Tuesday evening, where you know, many protesters were shot at, um, a lot of new um, requests have, have been made, have been made by the protesters, one of which is the resignation of the army chief. And also the calls for the presentation of the police chief has also grown. There's also you know, another segment of people now demanding the resignation of the president, Muhammad Buhari, and also the resignation of vice president, Yemi Oshibanjo. Nigerians, you know, a lot of these people believe that they haven't done enough you know, to inspire uh, aggrieved Nigerians also to quell the protest. And since this incident in Lagos happened, the president is yet to come up with any yeah. official statement on what you know uh, went on. It took the vice president up till this morning, you know, to condemn the incident. So, and you, you can understand why people are aggrieved. You know, you can't have things like this going on in the country, and then the people at the top, you know, just keep silent and are, are not willing to say anything about it. Like you're saying, uh, lots of questions on why uh, President Mahmoudou Burhari hasn't come out with the official statement. He's, he's appealed for calm through his spokesperson. Vice President has spoken, other officials have spoken. International community has also spoken. Now, the UN has spoken, the EU has spoken, the AU has spoken as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the UN uh, Human Rights uh, Head, uh, Michel Bachelard, has almost indicated that, you know, the, they have been predetermined live firing mm. on on uh, the uh, protesters so mm. international community is that making any difference in the, uh, how they're reacting well it's what we expected you know that the au the eu the un will condemn what's going on and these this, this organizations have frequently condemned acts of brutality everywhere in the world so we're expecting to see that from them with the, the nigerian situation it's just appalling that it took a long time before the government of Nigeria, you know, said anything about what, what went wrong. But whether, whether or not the reaction of the international community changes anything, it remains to be seen. You know, a lot of Nigerians want to see pressure applied on the federal government of Nigeria, you know, to do something. And it's not the first time that the international community, you know, is calling for um, reforms, you know, in the security, um, agencies. Many years ago, um, a lot of international bodies asked that the, the president look into extrajudicial um, killings, killings. By the military in the Northeast, in the fight against Boko Haram in the Northeast. And so far, we haven't heard much about, you know, what is being done you know, to look into what went wrong in, in that region. So that call for action has always been there. But what the Jews want to see now is still pressure and maybe punishment. There's a session of people in the social media that are asking that the US, you know, issues a visa ban on the leadership of the country, on the executive. So people want to see some kind of action, at least to awaken the minds of those in power. And maybe until that is done, you know, nothing much will change. Uh, when you're talking about uh, the protests uh, having lost momentum because of the situation, because of curfew, because of restrictions, because people are scared that they may be uh, fired on again, what is the situation in, for normal life? I mean, how are people going about uh, their daily routines in terms of getting essential commodities, 
has the oil sector been hit at all with these restrictions well to start with um the, the protest is still very strong on social media but on this street a lot of people will you know will, will back, back out you know back out the beat obviously because of the curfew and also because of fear that you know people will be hit you know but there's still many people out there in the streets of lagos still you know making their voices heard and um yes it has become really violent because a lot of properties have been burned down. A TV station was burned down yesterday. Um, a newspaper uh, outlet was also hit, you know, and um, a hotel in Lagos was also attacked. So um, people, a lot of people will, will look at it like, you know, this is becoming actually violent and then it's not exactly what we're going to see. And you don't, for a lot of people who are doing it, committing these acts is because they're being pushed to do what they're doing. You know, a lot of people are great at what happened on Tuesday evening. But in terms of normal life, yes, a lot has changed. You know, you know when there's a curfew, it's always going to be difficult you know, mm. to do a lot. And then even people who are, you know, essential workers are even scared of going out. I was speaking to a few journalists this morning, asking them if they've been at the office today, and they're telling me that they are, they are scared because they're even getting gunshots around the area. So they don't want to get into a situation where you know they, meet, they encounter security forces that you know who, who knows you want to go at, go at them, you know. So that, that is it. In, in terms of having an effect on the economy, mm-hmm. well, it's, 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 it's really too early to see if you know that's going to have a real damage or a real effect. I mean, okay. well, the situation that is just emerging out of you know, months of lockdown uh, from the coronavirus. So um, I'll say that a lot of people have become used to being at home, working from home, having meetings online. You know, so it remains to be seen how much effect this will have. But I don't expect to need to have so much, especially if this coffee is coffee is relaxed, maybe a day or two from now. So well, let, let's see how it goes. It's not in there Nigeria that is on this other coffee, just Lagos State and a few other cities. Yeah. But the, much of Nigeria is still very much open. Philip Obodi Jr., uh, thank you again for updating us on the situation, and we'll keep coming back to you for more. Always a pleasure, Mita. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, if you do like our journalism, you can get onto our website to support us. You've been watching Strat News Global. I'm Amita Brady.